Good day, my loves. I hope all is well with you. I have a quick excerpt. So even though I'm on my hiatus number two, it is December the 2nd at 4.06 p.m. And I'm sitting here looking through my old journals because I need some more paper to write, right? And so I flipped to this January 13th, 2014, 9.33 p.m. So this is Spiritually Savage here. I hope you are well. I hope someone has told you that they loved you today. And if they have not, let me tell you that I love you. Why? Even though I don't know you? Because you clicked onto my channel. You clicked onto this particular video. And if this is your first time, then welcome. Make sure you subscribe and like and share. Okay? But if you're, I, I, I had a couple of days where I was just feeling just emotional, just tired. And we, we are allowed to have those days. Why? Because we are spiritual beings having an human experience. And what does it mean to be human? It means to love. It means to have life learned lessons to help our spirit evolve. It means to feel all of the emotions that come with being a human, the array of emotions, you know, we all love the happy ones, the celebrations, you know, the good ones, the graduations, all that stuff. But when it comes to dealing with sadness and depression and being mad and angry, we, we don't deal with them too well. And, and for the most part, it's because in my situation, I wasn't aware of that's what it was, you know, me being mad all the time, angry all the time, besides the fact that I was pulling up on everybody's energy, I didn't realize it wasn't mine. And so I still didn't recognize when I was depressed though. I still didn't recognize when I was sad. It all came out in anger and argumentativeness and all that stuff, right? Okay. So I... Needless to say, I had a couple of emotional days where I was like, God, I'm tired. Okay, when is it going to be my turn? And I'm not ungrateful. I'm definitely not. Y'all can look at all my videos and I'm about to show you I'm not. I've always believed in God. I always believed that there was a higher purpose. I always believed in life learned lessons. This has been my journey my entire life. So when I came across spirituality, it was like, Wow. Okay. So there is another side of what I've been through. There is another side to what I experienced. There is another side to what I was feeling. And so now it's like, okay, I know now before I didn't know, and I was still moving ahead. I was still getting on and getting on and still loving. And, and I'm not going to stop that. That's just never going to stop. But now that I know that there is another side, it's like, okay, 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 right? So this just helped motivated me just, just now when I came across this excerpt. And so I'm hoping to share it with you at this particular moment in time in your journey, no matter when you come across this video, okay? And my first thing I, I said I got the victory, exclamation mark. I made it, Yolanda Adams, smiley face. Learning to finally live for God and myself. I am always secondary to him, but I am first to anyone else. Really never felt that way before. It's different, liberating, scary, but very freeing. I am solely responsible for my health, spiritual, everything. I don't want that type of responsibility. So I have learned to take it, to take it and give it to God. I still get a little crazy in the head for, uh, for a second, but I'm learning. I made it throughout it all. I made it. I made it from Yonkers, New York. Not singing, not showing my body, not sleeping around, not trampling over people. I made it out the hood. Badass Danielle. Smiling. P.
pure drive. Thank you, God, for placing the right people in my life at the right time. I just don't think I would have made it. I felt so alone. I cry now only because I'm looking back at the wounded creature, thinking, wow. There was once upon a time I was literally curled up in my second godma's room in a knot, literally speechless. When I look back, I was just lost in my own head. But today I'm doing okay. No, great. Emotional. Emotional. Less stress. Meaning I can look back sometimes and not cry for that innocence that was lost. At the tender age of 28. Always late with cycle. With did, did I write that for real? Hold on, let me turn the light on because I'm just struggling reading because I'm I got my curtain closed. Okay, hold on. Okay, it says at the tender age of 28, always late in. Yeah, that's how I've always felt. Oh my goodness, always late in the cyclical moments of life. Oh my gosh, y'all. Okay. I'm going to have her read this and then I'm going to tell you what. I, I just had a moment. I just had an epiphany. Okay. It was bound to happen, but I wasn't prepared. I think I'm less prepared now knowing, but I welcome knowing the pain and the happy that comes with it. Always wanting to know lessons to learn the good with the bad, but that's why when the good comes, you must celebrate it, enjoy it, take it in, become engulfed in it because when it's bad, it can get really bad. I'm ready for the next round. Please give me strength where it is needed. Patience when I have none. Uh, and the energy to do it. Learning to listen to you in my head. Not so hard-headed. Good night, Yeshua. God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm like, okay, so this was the part that I, I got like, um, like all mushy for. Because I said always late with the cyclical moments. And I've always felt that way. And so maybe if you've clicked on to this particular video, you feel like you're late in the game. Because that was what had me down for the past couple of days. I can be honest, this is a transparent moment. I've always shared with you guys how old I am. You know, I'm in my mid 40s. And so it's like all my life, up until Black Magic hit, I was always saying, I wanted five children, I wanted a husband, and blah, 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 right? But during my 20s, it was like, okay. And I, matter of fact, I was in a real serious relationship. We was talking about kids and marriage and all that stuff, but it didn't work out. And I was like 26, something like that. And so I was tired of doing things the, the, my way, which was the way my heart was set up. And I went against myself. I've, I've said that story a bunch of times, but I've always felt late, even in my teen years, you know, when all my friends was having sex and I wasn't. When everybody started driving and I wasn't, when everybody got, I've always felt behind. I've always felt late, but I recognize and appreciate that it is my cycle that I am on with my natural surroundings, that I am never late. It is always on time for myself. And I recognize just now in this moment that as I'm talking to you guys, that what I've been doing is subconsciously comparing myself. I would have never thought that I was comparing myself because, you know, society tells you that you should be, get your learners, learners this day, this day. Um, you should get your driver's license at this age. You should, you know, marry and have children at this age. And so it kind of sets up our psychological subconscious because it's been done since we were born and raised up, right? I'm just recognizing this, y'all, so bear with me. Um, and so it's like now I just recognize, I just realized, I just understood 
that I've been comparing myself. And even though it was because of the, it's the societal norm to be married and blah, 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 like that. Who is to say that that is the right way? Everybody is not built that way. And so it's like I wasn't accepting myself in my own journey, right? So that just helped me out because literally that's what I was saying to God. I was like, listen, I'm not, I'm paraphrasing because this is not how it went. But basically it was like, if I'm, 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 I'm this age right now. I'm like, okay, I did it. I'm like, okay, I did it. I did it. I persevered. I kept my cool and I'm still able to love, right? So why? Why? We always ask why. And I try not to ask why. I really do. I, I can go weeks and months without asking why, but then I'll feel this sense. like. And I think what sparked it was that I was watching, um, they were sentimental videos, but they were they were happy videos. And I was smiling and everything, but they still brought up that, 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 what is a, it's a void. It's a, it's a sense of a void, you know, because I know I deserve to have people around me that actually love me and can support me and can big me up and can congratulate me and can assist me on my journey, you know, and, and I know that because it's on the other side, right? It's on the other side. During your spiritual journey, you will be forced to give up things that you love but are no longer appropriate. They are no longer beneficial to your spiritual journey. And we get so attached to the avatar that we, we forsake our spiritual journey, which keeps us hostage, which keeps us poor. It does. It keeps us poor spiritually and financially hear what i just said it keeps us poor spiritually it stunts our growth it hinders our ability to ascend to reach the higher dimension okay and financially it does but understand the spiritual part first. It hinders. It hinders you. As above, so below. Namaste, Ashe. Ashe. You know, I looked it up. There's Ashe and Ashe. Both of them. And it's and, and I forget what they said the meanings are. Because like Ashe, Ashe. Well, when you say it's Ashe, Ashe. I don't know. Y'all tell me. Because when I looked it up, it was like A-S-E and then there's A-S-H-E, but they have different meanings. I looked it up, though, but I can't remember. Maybe next time I'll look it up and write it down. That's probably the only way I'm going to remember it. Yeah, my memory been bad, but it's good. My memory's bad, but then it's good. Uh, hard to explain. Love you guys. Have a good one.